This channel, primarily, focuses entirely on video games. I present myself solely as a gamer, and that's true. It is my primary hobby. But there's another side to me. If you dig a little deeper, if you analyse the videos, or sort of one most popular, you'll find it. I like football. And England just won the Euros! Ah! Uh, no, never mind. Regardless, England men's made it to their second successive European Championship final. And I could talk for ages about how unlikely our route to meet Spain was, but you're here for the games and I don't want to bore anyone. But this is such a monumental event in English footballing history, I, I gotta do something for the occasion. And seeing how this is my guilty pleasure game... EA FC 24 was updated to add a Euros 2024 tournament mode, letting you take control of a team of the competition and guide them to total victory. Or suicide bomb Scotland up a group with zero points. Well, that is going to go down as an own goal by the keeper. I'll simply select every team, go to the match day page, instantly select quick sim, advance, move on to the next team, and then I just rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, trying not to peek at any scores and letting the simulator decide how to replace injured players. It's not a perfect system, but it's also the only system, and repeating it over and over and over and over and over again gives us simulation one. What the fuck is that? To compare the simulator to what happened in real life, Portugal went out to France in the quarterfinals on penalties, and Belgium absolutely crashed out to France a game prior, losing thanks to a late Vertonghen own goal in the round of 16. In this simulation, however, thanks to their different group stage placements, they ended up on opposite sides of the knockout brackets, ducked France, and are now facing each other in the final. Yeah! Okay, so based on that, the simulator doesn't seem too accurate. This is a final that quite simply couldn't exist in real life. But taking a deeper look at who actually ended up in the round of 16... It could have certainly been worse. We've got two big nations in the final, a KG2 semi-final matches, both 1-0 wins, a dark horse quarterfinal run in the Ukraine and a surprise knockout team in Georgia, which actually came true in real life. There are some differences compared to what happened literally if you start looking a little deeper. Croatia got grouped in real life but made it to the round of 16 here, but Overall, I'm seeing Germany and Switzerland, England and Denmark, Portugal and Turkey. These teams are all qualifying just like they did in real life, and despite some questionable amount of goals on the right side of the screen here, I think it's decently impressive that the knockout bracket is as accurate as it is. But these amount of goals are still a concern. Are, are, are we seeing this the same way? England 4, Netherlands 2, Spain 3, Germany 3, Portugal 3, Ukraine 2. Things tighten up by the semi-finals, but the defence is just non-existent this campaign from every team in the competition. I wonder what the effect is on the player stats. Okay, wait, 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 wait. There's still one game to go. For all we know, Lukaku is scoring five and claiming the golden boot for himself. Be because that's unrealistic. That, that's the joke, you you'll see, you'll see. Okay, so for the record, I was going to try and use the tactical viewing option so we could actually watch the players score their goals. But when I tried that... And you cannot argue with a hat-trick. Simply unstoppable today. Yeah, I don't know what happened here either. So instead, we're gonna use the match sim option just so we can see the match play out fully. Then I'll jump in right at the end so we can get a nice little trophy lift animation. Got it? Got it. Let's go watch Portugal Belgium. Cristiano Ronaldo kicks off his second European Championship final as we get underway in Berlin. I don't know why I paused it here. Portugal have a free kick and most of the pressure inside the first 10 minutes, but it's a brilliant counter-attack led solely by Belgium's young winger Jeremy Doku who bags the opener. Like, seriously, this is incredible. Castagne gives him the ball and he slides past about three Portuguese players, including 41-year-old Pepe. You could tell I'm a fucking neek because I know all of these little coloured dots names. Around 10 minutes later, Portugal lose the ball high up the pitch again and it leads to another successful Belgium counter-attack, with Lukaku's cross finding De Bruyne in the box who lays it off for Onana to fire him from close range. It's 2-0 inside 25 minutes. Seriously, it feels like every time Portugal get forwards, it comes back to haunt them. Belgium always win it back and never mind 2-1 Bruno Fernandes. I'm a big fan of Bruno Fernandes, try and guess why, so I'm happy to see him score. Maybe his goal could inspire a Portugal fight back. We're still barely half an hour into the match with a full hour of normal time to go. There's plenty of time for someone like Ronaldo, Liao, Silva, Cancelo to- Belgium have won the Euros on this dramatic night here in Berlin. I don't know why Vertonghen's lifting it, actually. De Bruyne's supposed to be the captain. Portugal 1, Belgium 2. Can I see that happening in real life? 
No. Even with a rapidly aging Cristiano Ronaldo, Portugal are a better team, both on the pitch and man to man, than Belgium, who have kind of aged out of their golden generation by now. De Bruyne is their best player, and he's physically washed, and Fies and Vertonghen are not a centre back pairing that can win you the year. I need to shut up, let's just keep going with the simulation. You know what? Anything can happen in the cup final. Slovakia could beat Portugal in a one-off game. Hell, we saw Georgia beat them 2-0 in the group stage. I could totally see Belgium having a chance of beating them in a final. But Lukaku, as the outright top scorer of the competition. In real life, the Euros had a pretty pathetic group of top scorers, with the golden boot being shared between six players across six oh, no. nations. This reality's Lukaku, however, is an outright winner. He has eight goals from seven matches, which is... It's less games and thus less goals, but ratio-wise, that competes with some of Messi and Ronaldo's best Champions League campaigns, just to put this into perspective. And what makes this even funnier is Lukaku scored zero Euro 2024 goals in real life. He went from zero to eight. But, but, but then, just to put the cherry on top, just like how the actual competition saw a six-way tie for the top scorer award, Lukaku is in front of five joint runners-up. Arnatovic, Morata, Kane, Wind, and Liao. So the exact same six-way tie nearly happened, only for Lukaku, Lukaku, the ultimate meme, to swoop in, score eight goals, and win the entire competition. That's Aura. And if we take a look at the assists, Usman Dembele is leading, but Harry Kane isn't too far behind him. Five goals and four assists for the England captain is practically a trophy for England in my book. No, no, no it isn't, for fuck's sake, no it isn't. Belgium? Really? We're going out in the semis thanks to what could only possibly be a Lukaku goal in a 1-0 win. It is a Lukaku goal in a 1-0 win. You're going to sit me down and make me watch a fucking Oyazabal late winner against England in the final and not expect me to keep simulating? Hold my woke England flag, I'll be right back. <laughs> Finally, we storm past Poland in the round of 16. Devour Scotland in the quarter fight. Whoa, wait. What? Scotland in the quarters? We gazump France in the semi-finals to set up a blockbuster final against none other than Cristiano Ronaldo's Portugal. Uh, again. We've been here before, Portugal lost, I fancy our chances. So I'm going to come back to this in a bit once I've checked out the player stats. <laughs> 10 goals from 6 matches, he didn't even make it to the final, that's obscene! He's quite literally the first player to do this since Francis Michel Platini. So there's your flaw, I guess. Scotland making the knockout brackets is pretty terrible, but other than that, they're kind of accurate. Both these player stats are just... Fucking hell! Taking the Euros mask off for just a moment, the simulator can be wild. You'll be seven seasons into a career mode, have a team full of 90 rated players, sim a match against AFC Wimbledon who play in the fourth division of English football and lose 2-1. Across these tournaments, it's been pretty accurate, but some of these games, player stats, it doesn't feel totally realistic. So maybe think twice before you trust one of those posts showing you the World Cup winner simulated by FIFA, or the final Premier League table simulated by a supercomputer, or get your hopes up from EA telling you England will finally win the Euros. Because as I ju just found out, their simulators are actually depressingly accurate. Oh.